Welcome to Unity Talks, where the hiring experts of Dallas-based recruiting firm Unity Search engage in lively discussion with successful business leaders to dissect their careers and how they got to where they are today, the obstacles overcome to reach their success, and steps they've taken to stay at the top of their respective fields. So listen in as we provide you with the thought-provoking conversation and ideas that keep industries moving forward. Welcome back to the Unity Talks podcast. I'm your host, David Cathy, and I have a fantastic guest with us today. As you know, we focus on accounting, finance, and tax professionals, and we try to identify local leaders in DFW to interview to give you little tidbits of leadership development, of advice for people who are climbing in their career, and we have a fantastic guest today for that. Her name is Elizabeth Grammer. Welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I got to say, your last name is Grammar. I was terrible at Grammar as a a kid. So I'm telling you, so it's my husband's family. They misspelled it. It's E-R instead of A-R. So, Well, we're really excited about having you here. So I'm going to brag on you for a quick second. So I have a couple of things that I want to brag on you about as we jump into this. So Elizabeth is the VP of Tax at Learfield IMG College, which is in Plano. And if you are a college athletics fan, you will probably know a little bit about Learfield IMG College. And we were just talking about how we're really looking forward to the fall season and fall sports taking off. So couple of things about Elizabeth. She is from New Orleans originally. She actually moved to DFW for career opportunities, right? That's it. And I feel like everybody's doing that nowadays (laughs) because all these companies are coming to Dallas and people are flocking to Dallas as well, right? It's, It's a great place to live. And so if you just look at everything, not only career opportunities, but just the general life in this area. It's it's awesome. Yeah. A couple of other things. So she started her career in public accounting, 21 years at Linux, climbing the corporate ladder, which we'll get into a little bit here. And probably your biggest accomplishment, I would assume, is a mom of two kiddos. Yep. One is fixing to be a longhorn, so you're losing Welcome one. Horns. Yeah, <laughs> you're losing one. And yeah. the other one, your daughter is going to be a sophomore, correct? Right, right. She'll be so. a sophomore at PCA this fall. So. Proud moment? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Graduation was um was kind of tough, but it was all good. Yeah. So mix of emotions, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Happy for him, a little sad for you and right. husband, right? Sad for little sister. She, sad for little they're sister. really close and so she'll miss him. Yeah. But um but it's good. He's gonna be a biomedical engineering major at um uh, at UT. So. Yeah, we actually talked a little bit about that, which is crazy, because when I look back and our discussions over the past couple of years, one of the things I learned about you, so again, VP of tax, but as a kid wanted to be a veterinarian. Right. Why did you want to be a veterinarian and how did that transform into a VP of tax? (laughs) Well, so, you know, I've always loved animals, still do. We have three dogs, they're crazy, all that kind of stuff. Um, but my mom's reaction to wanting to be a veterinarian was, you are not smart enough to do that. You need to be like a doctor. <laughs> and so uh, I was like, okay, check that one off. Now, it was not bad advice in the end because I'm really not great with blood. Yeah. So, you know, steering me away from that was probably okay, just not the best way to do it. Um, but then I have two sisters who are a good bit older than I am. One's 18 years older and one's 11 years older. And so by the time I was going to college, they were both mar- out of college and married, both CPAs, both married to CPAs. And I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm pretty good at math. I can do that. So, so you're telling me that. they suckered you in. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of, yeah. but they were both in audit. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, so you so feel like you got the last tax. laugh. You outsmarted them by, Absolutely. by being in tax. Absolutely. Awesome. So. Awesome. Well, your kids are following in your footsteps mm-hmm. because your son wants to do something in the medical field. And I yep. think your daughter, daughter does. does too. What she was that? Does. Um, she's leaning toward kind of forensics type stuff right now. But, um, but they have absolutely no qualms about blood and you know my son sliced his hand open last week and he's like wow mom look at that. I'm like oh no I don't think so um so yeah my daughter watched them cut her arm open to take something out one time and I had to leave the room 
And so later she was like, well, Mom, who called? What do you mean, who called? Well, you got up to take a phone call. Like, during your surgery, I did not get up to take a phone call. <laughs> I almost passed out. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's your excuse. You should, you should have gone with it. Oh, yeah, I had an important call from someone at work, I right? Was, I would not put somebody at work over my daughter having surgery. That's one of those lessons. Yeah, that yeah, we learned. yeah. everybody write that down right now. Okay, we're going to hit pause, let you all write that down. We'll jump back in here. So you also win the award that I know of of someone who's home, work, and kids' school is like within five minutes of each other. Yep. So you're very spoiled. <laughs> Absolutely spoiled. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. Because, uh, well, let's, right let's go back to talking about what we were initially coming in here for. So you started okay. in public accounting. Right. Um, and then you went to Linux and you spent nearly 21 years at Linux and you moved all over the place. When you decided to leave public accounting, and this is a this is a question that many of our listeners face. When you decided to leave public accounting, like, what do you think are the reasons people leave public accounting to get industry experience that you're aware of and maybe what were some of your reasons for looking at industry? Um, a lot of times it's work-life balance because I was in a small public firm doing mostly individuals and so um, the hours were just crazy. Mm -hmm. um, not just for tax busy season but kind of all the time. Um, and. You know, there's a little bit of wanting to see something different. And when you're in a small firm, especially, uh, we, it was, again, individuals, small businesses, that kind of thing. And then I had the opportunity to go to Lenox and see this big multinational, well, somewhat multinational at the time that I started, mm -hmm. um, enterprise. And so I uh, decided to make that move out there. Yeah. When you've interviewed people who may have come from a larger public background mm -hmm. and, and had discussions on whether or not they're a person that should be hired, whether it was when you were at Linux or where you're currently at or some of the little stops in between, mm -hmm. what are you looking for in someone who wants to climb in their career and they decided public accounting isn't where they want to be? What are the qualities maybe on the resume and then what are the characteristics of the people that you're trying to identify with? So on the resume, um, it's going to be just being in tax. So mm -hmm. generally, in, if you're in public accounting and you're in tax, a lot of times you can translate that into different aspects of tax when you get into industry. Um, and so that's the, that's the main thing there. But the, the desire to keep learning Mm -hmm. is the big characteristic that I'm always looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I want somebody who's always trying to get better, trying to learn more, uh, pursuing excellence, not perfection, but excellence mm -hmm. in everything they do. Yeah. It, do you look at resume? So I'm sure that there are people who are going to be looking or listening to this and maybe they're in the middle of updating a resume, mm -hmm. right? And it could be that they're listening to this six months from now. Mm -hmm. and they want to update their resume. Are you looking at resumes just to kind of check, you know, yep, they've got tax, they've got an accounting degree, they have certain things I'm looking for, now I need to see the person, person. and identify? Absolutely, because you can, you can put a lot of things down as, you know, oh, I have experience in this, but then when you bring them in for the interview, you have the conversation. Like, okay, tell me the story. Mm -hmm. Tell me what was happening. Tell me how you were involved in it. And being able to tell that story is the important part for them. That's what I need to say. Yeah. Well, we talk it a lot in, in our business. Uh, mm -hmm. Stories, people connect with stories. Mm -hmm. You can tell them facts and figures and they'll forget it like this. Mm -hmm. But they connect with the story and they a lot of times they identify or see themselves within that story mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's a little bit of what you're looking for. Right, right. And just being able to explain the things that you've done because, um, it, you know, you can have somebody even straight out of school, well, I was in this class and we did this group project, but I only worked on this little bitty area of it. Mm -hmm. But if you can go in and tell the whole story about this was the whole project, my part was this, but I understand how all the other parts worked that makes for a great employee because yeah. they're interested in the whole picture. Yeah, yeah. So. It's one of the things you see a lot, I'm assuming, where you need people focused on what their function is mm -hmm. 
but a good business person can pick their head up and look at the big picture. And those are the people usually like if I, I, I would tie it back into your time at Linux, mm -hmm. where you moved over the course of nearly 21 years there, you moved into many different departments. Mm -hmm. I was I was in tax the whole time, but different aspects of tax, um, and so that's that's exactly what happened. I was I was doing state and local when I started there, and then Linux acquired a whole bunch of international subsidiaries, and our new VP came over and he was like, "Okay, I've seen the work that you do. You do good work. You care about the business. You care about what you're doing. Do you want to do international?" I know nothing about it, but sure, sign me up. I'll give it a try. Yeah. And so um, that turned into a, a long career in international at Linux. Yeah. So what, Linux is a big company. Yes. And so how do you, you did it because a VP recognized your work mm -hmm. and you were given opportunities. And sometimes when you're early in your career, you feel like you're just sitting in a cubicle tucked away and no one sees what you're doing. Right. How do we help those people out? What, what should they do? Do they need to, you know, our millennial generation nowadays, and I'm sure Gen Z even more than them, mm -hmm. do a much better job than my generation, Gen X, of using their right. voice and speaking up. I just kind of would mm -hmm. just sit there and pound out the work and hoping that someone recognized me. Right. What advice would you give to someone who finds themselves tucked away in a cube, trying to, wanting, having the desire to prove themselves and get promoted? So, you know, most, again, most of my experience is tax, mm -hmm. but um, the thing that I see is if you go in and ask how you can help. You know, I always made sure that my boss felt like he had somebody that he could come to to back him up so that it wasn't all on his shoulders. And so if you go in and speak up and say, you know, is there something I can do to help you? I know you're working on some project that got mentioned on some company-wide call. Is there something I can do to support you in that? In And then if, he, if that person gives you something, do it joyfully and do it well. And don't complain that, well, this isn't the, you know, this isn't the rocket science I thought it was gonna yeah. be. I thought you'd make me the star just go do the good job. And then they're like, okay, well, you know, they volunteered last time, next time I'm gonna remember that person because I know they're willing to step up and do something. Yeah, it's really good that you say that. I feel like that's a theme that we hear talking to a lot of other leaders is mm -hmm. the term volunteer. Mm -hmm. Don't sit back and wait for it to come to you. Right. Be proactive. Have, have Sometimes it takes guts. For me, early in my career, that would have taken a lot of guts for me to actually go and say, hey, I want to do this. Right. Um, and if you're one of those people, then have the guts to stand up right. and, and ask for that work, right? Right, right. Um, and yeah. as, you, as you grew in your career and you became a leader over larger teams, mm -hmm. Uh, were you, I would assume you're always looking for someone who was volunteering and coming and talking to you. Absolutely. Because if, if your staff is going to be sitting there and, and, you know, they don't ever come and talk to you and say they have time to help, you know, oftentimes we'll sit there and go, okay, well, they're, they already have enough. I don't want to, I don't want to overwhelm them. So I'll just keep it when really it's something that they have time for, they have an interest in. They just need to, to speak up and say so. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. And from a culture of your team, not, not the big organization, mm -hmm. but your team from a culture, as a leader, do you try to make it known to them that you want them to come and approach mm -hmm. you if you're looking for other opportunities and that yeah. you don't want to be the person that's blocking them for the growth in their career? Right. So um, they, I always treat everybody as if, they're professionals because that's what they are. And I've always told them, you know, I, I am not a in your chair, eight to five kind of person. Be here when you need to be here. Be gone when you need to be gone. Do a good job and get the work done. And then when you have extra time, make sure you let me know and I'll have all kinds of opportunities for you because there's always stuff going on that you may or may not know about that I can give you the chance to work on. So. Are these some of the things, so I've got, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm imagining you telling your employees this 
And I'm sitting there thinking she's got to talk to her kids about this too. Are these things that you're trying to impart on your kids as well? Yes. And they don't always listen quite so well, yeah. but, um, but it, it definitely is just, you know, always doing your best, volunteering for more and learning about everything going on around you kind of back to that same concept of the group project, knowing the whole group project, know the business, know wherever it is you're trying to work, whatever it is you're trying to do, know about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, you may not know, you know, in-depth details about it all, but having some, some broader knowledge of it lets you uh, look at the big picture and then you can also dive in and work the details too, mm -hmm. so. So I think that advice is volunteer mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do more than just your little component even if it might be outside of tax, mm -hmm. if you're given that opportunity, right? Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you are, and sometimes you're not. But if you're given the opportunity yeah. to look at something outside of tax, I would assume that that would be something you'd want an employee to do to develop them. Right, right. And I mean, I, I was telling y'all about that before that, like I spend a lot of time now with our accounts receivable team because um, I do a lot of the legal structure planning and um, I'm the one that maintains the org chart, all that kind of thing. So those are things that are kind of outside of tax, but it's still stuff that I can use to be helpful and contribute to the organization. And, and so that's what I'm always encouraging them to do is look at what else you can do, what, who you can help out just to, yeah. to make yourself valuable. Yeah. And when you're valuable, people know it. Yeah, that's right. We talked about there's no recipe. It's not like right. someone writes a recipe out and says, well, this is what you have to do. Right. You have to pick your spots and you, you have to be valuable to an organization. And mm -hmm. sometimes that means being a little resourceful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Learning the systems, um, being, being the go-to person for something, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that something may be, which may not be specifically for tax but if you're the if you're the IT resource for your group yeah. you're not in IT but you're the one who knows how to get everything done people recognize that yeah. and so I feel like you have to be a little bit risky at times mm -hmm. that sounds weird saying tax and risky <laughs> right that's blasphemy here, measured I, okay risk. measured let's use <laughs> let's use measured i like see this is the grammar thing we were talking about earlier you're much better at this i'm using words like risky and you're like tax people no <laughs> so the europeans will call them tax schemes and I'm like oh that just that just doesn't sound it right doesn't sound, yeah. that's just normal for yeah. what they call I, as a side note, I feel like Elizabeth is trying to like pull one over me because we were talking about the language differences between <laughs> Europe and we're not going to go there on this podcast right now. Um, where I was going with the riskiness mm -hmm. is as a leader, as an employee and, and you want to grow, you have to be maybe willing to do things uh, without asking permission. Mm -hmm. And you kind of get to that edge. Like if I'm a tax person and I want to grow in my career, mm -hmm. I want to know what the other pieces of the puzzle are. And even right. though I haven't been given permission, I'm going to try to insert myself, which can seem measured, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and you butt up against that edge of, um, of what you have responsibility for or right. been given responsibility for and what you shouldn't be doing. And I think as a leader, you want people on your team like that. You and you have to give them a little bit of grace. Mm -hmm. Um, to try things. And, and I think that's a quality that uh, maybe is not rewarded as much as it perhaps should. Right. I think a lot of leaders are stay in your lane and, and you know, just do what you've been told to do. Um, but I think that's, that's part of an employee's opportunity is to look to have the right leader yeah. that they're working for. Look for somebody that will let them, you know, branch out and and learn new things and so but again you have to speak up to get those opportunities so. yeah you have a really interesting story about how you got to Learfield because <laughs> you weren't necessarily like I've got to make a job move I'm looking for something and this yeah. story goes back years right and right. more of your 
your daughter's personal life and your personal life and mm -hmm. you landed at Learfield. And I'd love for you to share a little bit of that, if you wouldn't mind, because I think sure. the moral of the story, what you should be listening for is you never know who is watching. Exactly. Right? So tell us a little bit about that story. So um, my daughter was four years old and she signed up to be in the church basketball league. And so you know, we didn't know anybody else at the school and church yet. And so we, um, we get put on a team and I get an email from the coach and it lines out how we get uniforms and when practices are gonna be and when the games are gonna be. It's got an Excel schedule attached to it with all the deadlines and names, everybody's email, beautiful. And I called my husband, I'm like, I love this guy. He's awesome. And so, and then I get to the bottom of the email, I'm like, oh, he's the CFO at La Quinta. So fast forward a few years, my daughter and his daughter are best friends. And so my daughter's gone on trips with them, their daughter's been with us, all this kind of stuff. Well, he is now my boss. So um, when I was at Tuesday morning, he texts me one night and he's like, hey, um, my tax person's leaving, you wanna talk? Absolutely, I've wanted to work for you for you know ten years, so sure. <laughs> and so that's how I wound up over there. Yeah. And so now I work for a, a great CFO. Yeah, such a cool story. <laughs> and initially, when I was thinking about it, you never know who is watching. It wasn't someone watching you. Mm -hmm. It was you watching your future boss uh, right, right now and how he carried himself. Right. And I think that's so important for people to mm -hmm. to think about how they carry themselves inside of their profession, mm -hmm. how they carry themselves as they walk through the atrium of their building. How yeah. do they treat people? Because someone is Very. always watching, right? Right. And you, right. It might be your kids. It might be someone who's going to come work for you. It might be someone who's going to hire you. Yeah. But just just be yourself character is very important mm -hmm. do the right thing and then you don't have to worry so much about who's watching because you're doing the right thing such sage advice <laughs> i love that i thought that was such a great little story i would say that if i was the cfo i would probably try to outsource the design of the practice schedule and stuff like that because that's not me <laughs> i'm like let's just talk and get it over with Good. But <laughs> yeah, could have. So, but he had the ability to, and then the forethought to do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's such a great story. So, I want to transition to one mm -hmm. thing real quick. We're going to touch on it really fast, and then we'll we'll go through a little bit of a wrap up. So, you you do a great job of balancing work and home, from my perspective. I'm sure personally to you, you may say, well, there's some days, some days where I might not. Right. Yeah. But as I've known you, you do such a great job. You're involved in your kids' lives and and then you do great at your job. How do you work on striking that balance? What's your tip? So um, it's really the kind of decide what has to get done and what's the most important thing at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, missing out on your kids' lives is not a good answer ever. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, now I, and it, it was really difficult when we went into the lockdown because my computer was just right there and it was so easy to just be on it all night. And so I really had to make a conscious decision in the last year that, okay, there comes a time of the day when I'm just done and I'll yeah. still check email later and that kind of thing. But um, it, it all has to be intentional mm -hmm. is what it is. You have to intentionally make time for your family, make time and plan out the schedule so that you can cover everything. Mm -hmm. so. when, you, when you think about the age your kids are. Um, I can't believe it. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> You know, they've not known life without a phone or some type of social media or, you know, Snapchat or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And now we have, now they're entering the workforce. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you, 
you guys, most leaders that I've talked to have had discussions on how to get their attention and do we have their undivided attention? Are they looking at their phone during meetings? And how do you strike that balance with, with making sure that their attention is there for their job? This is their career. It's really mm -hmm. important for them. Right. When you think through that, if you were to put your kids in that situation, what, what advice do you give to our younger generation now? It's really make sure that you show what you care about. If you care about the job and you want to show that you want to do a good job, then take that into consideration with how much time that phone is in your hand. Um, because if your phone is, and you know, just warning them, if your phone is in your hand and somebody thinks you should be paying attention to your job, they're not gonna ask, well, was it just a quick text or was it, or, you know, or were you spending 15 minutes on Snapchat? Mm -hmm. um, so just be aware of that and focus on what you care about mm -hmm. and, and showing that. Yeah. It's so. So. I understand from their perspective how hard it could be because, you know, you have engineers that are yeah. paid hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to take your Something attention. <laughs> and that's it. Like, that's what they're paid right. to do is how can we garner more of your attention? Okay. As a leader, I'm going to flip the coin on you because I'd love your thoughts here. Mm -hmm. How do you have that conversation with an employee? How do you pull them aside or or... You know, is it, I got to give you a warning or, you know, how do you approach that? Um, I never go to the give you a warning because un until it's just been abused mm -hmm. to the nth degree. Um, because again, I think everybody's professional in what we're doing. And so the conversation is, hey, you know, I, I might know why you were looking at your phone right then, but the other people in the room didn't. And so you need to make sure that that you show that you're interested in what they have to say. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of more of a coaching perspective mm -hmm. of you know, people's perception matters and what they perceive about you. If you have your head down on your phone the whole time, it's not necessarily positive. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's really good. I, it's such a hard, you don't want to turn people off, but you want to right. coach them. Right. And I think sometimes as a leader, you can map out not only the perception you're giving to the people that you're in the room with, mm -hmm. but also you can map out what your career, what could happen to your career right. if you continue down this path. Right. You limit your opportunities, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think it's making awareness about that is, is really critical. And I think yeah. that's, I think managers need to be accountable for coaching people properly early in their career. Mm -hmm. And they may not they may not thank you at the time. Right. 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 It may be years <laughs> from now that they turn back and you know, that that Elizabeth Grammer, she told me that was that was good advice. I should have heeded right. that advice. So Yeah. Well we're, so we're gonna wrap up here and, okay. and I I have a question. It's the same question I ask everybody okay. at the end. It's what is the one piece of advice for someone early in their career? They're just graduating. They're about to launch into their tax career. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the one piece of advice that you would impart on them that in, and it could be an action like do this or have this type of mindset. It's, it's definitely the mindset. It's the whole pursue excellence. Um, always striving to do better, always trying to do the absolute best you can. Um, but not perfection, because if you are striving for perfection, there's only been one person who was perfect mm -hmm. and it's not me and it's not you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's no point. And all that will do is frustrate you and tend to frustrate other people around you. Mm -hmm. But if you're striving for excellence in everything that you do, then people are going to recognize it and you'll have that, have those opportunities. Yeah. I feel like, you know, per perfection can cause paralysis because it just stops dead in the water Absolutely. and it doesn't move. And, right. and being successful in your career takes action. Mm -hmm. It takes movement and it takes intentional movement, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think that's great advice Mm -hmm. for our listeners uh, to think about that and pursuing excellence. And part of pursuing excellence, I would believe, is you need to ask for feedback. Mm -hmm. Mm Because you may think you're pursuing excellence and you're doing everything properly that would be recognized as pursuing excellence, but you really need to ask for that feedback, not just from a leader, but your peers. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah. Which is, so one of the things that we always did was have um, peer-to-peer review, not not review of your overall job, but review of tax returns, review of different things. And it gives you a whole different perspective on things when you're having a conversation with your peer and they're saying, well, hey, you might've done this right, but I can't tell. Can you, could you lay this out differently? Oh, well, I never thought about laying it out differently because I knew what it meant. And so those those peer-to-peer reviews can be very valuable. Yeah. Really good feedback. Yeah. So. I think being, we, we need to be more open for advice. I'm not going to say criticism yeah. because you're going to correct me from a grammar <laughs> standpoint. So I'm trying to use a proper <laughs> word here, advice. We need to be more open for advice in our pursuit of excellence, not perfection, right? Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth, you've been fantastic. Oh, you've had all these little golden nuggets of advice, both for leaders and for new employees beginning in their career. So I thank you for that. We at Unity, thank you for that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's Absolutely. Fun. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. And you even made it through the fire engine going in the background and didn't miss a beat so kudos to her for that um i did too and i'm easily distracted so thank you so much for your time and for being here and to all of our listeners we really appreciate you joining us we do this every other week and we hope that we are providing a service to you with the leaders that we have here thanks so much and until next time if you're looking for the next step in your career or the missing piece for your team Unity Search has you covered. Whether it's finance and accounting, tax services, information technology, or human resources, Unity Search is here for you with experienced and dedicated hiring professionals. Reach out today and take the next step. Unity Search, placing you first.